chica. Alright, in this video we're going to be taking a look at metric relations in right triangles. And uh, this is simply a special situation involving similar triangles where we have a uh, right angle triangle that's shown and the height of the right triangle is also drawn in. So it's going to look a little bit like this. So we've got a big right angle triangle. Again, we notice by the uh, squaring up here that's a right triangle. And then we've got the height of the triangle drawn in as well. So again, we see it's 90 degrees to the base. And um, you often see that when it's shown with area. So we've got a right angle triangle and then the height's drawn in. And when we do this, it actually creates three similar triangles, and then there's several special formulas that can be applied that only work in this special situation. So what we have is we have uh, three triangles. I'll highlight them for you. It can be sometimes tricky to see them. So we've got one triangle here, a small one uh, on the left that I'll do in yellow. All right. We've got another triangle just kind of opposite that one over here that I'll do in green. There's a second one here. And then we've got the, the big triangle that we started with. And uh, let's see if you can try that one. It's not there. And there we go. So we end up with three triangles. And as it turns out, these triangles are all uh, similar triangles. Uh, remember, similar triangles means that they're essentially the same triangle. They have the same angles, but they're just different sizes. And uh, just to, to show you that that's the case, we can see that all three of the triangles have a right angle. There's one here, of course, since this is a straight line, there'd actually be a right angle over here as well. The big one is marked with a right angle up here. And it doesn't matter what this other angle is. It would be the same as the other one. So let's, let's just say, I'm just going ma to make this up just to demonstrate. Let's say this is 60 degrees. Well, if this angle here is 60 degrees, then if I look at my big pink triangle, it's got an angle of 90 degrees, an angle of 60 degrees, and since all the angles must add up to 180, that means this angle over here would have to be uh, 30 degrees. Well, now let's take a look, say, at our yellow triangle. It's got an angle of 90 degrees down here. It's got an angle of 60 degrees, and so this last angle up here would have to be 30 degrees as well. And then, well, since this is a right angle, 30 degrees are over here, so we'd have to have a 60 degree angle over here. So again, just using with that same example, we can see that, well, all of the triangles have a right angle, an angle of 60 degrees, and an angle of 30 degrees. So they are, in fact, uh, similar triangles. All right, so the first thing you need to do with metric relations uh, is we, we have to label our sides. And this is probably the hardest part. You'll see a few different uh, ways that you can label them. Um, and I, this is the way that I prefer because I think it builds on a lot of other uh, ways you've already labeled things. Um, the other ways, they're certainly not wrong, and it will make the letters in your formula a little bit different. But, um, it, but the, the other ways will work, uh, will work just as well. But again, I'm just going to... I'm just going to use this method. So if we look at a right angle triangle, and you've probably done Pythagorean theorem before, and with Pythagorean theorem, when you label your uh, right triangle, you usually use the letters A, B, and C, where C represents the hypotenuse, and A and B represents the two sides. So we're going to start by doing that. So we've got A, B, and C, which are the sides of my big triangle. Now, the piece here, most of you have probably referred to as the height, so we're just going to call that H for height. And the only other two sides we have now are this side here of the, small of the smallest triangle and then this side over here. And we use, I'm going to use M and N. And if you've ever um, divided a line into a ratio, usually we use M and M for that ratio as well. M being uh, one piece and then um, our division point would be right here and then M being the part after that. So again, the advantage in using um, these letters is it just ties in uh, well with uh, concepts you've likely already done or maybe doing in the, uh, in the near future. So once we do this, we can show with metric relations we have a few different formulas that apply. And uh, you're going to need to write these down. You're going to need to have them handy when you're doing metric relations. Uh, memorizing them can be a little bit uh, tricky. The f although the first two formulas are actually kind of the same. A squared equals m times c. And you could sit down and try and figure all these out if you wanted. Uh, we're not going to bother doing that in this video. So a squared equals m times uh, c. And then well, on this side, again, it's kind of the same thing, except it's b squared equals n times c. Um, again, same, same letters, but um, or pardon me, same uh, 
same piece of information as uh, on different sides. Our second one says h squared, so the square of the height will equal m times n. And the last formula is ch, so this times this equals a times b. And um, to figure out the last one, it's actually pretty easy. If you had a, uh, the area formula, we have base times height divided by 2. So C would be the base and H would be the height of the triangle. And then we divide by 2 to find the area. If you were to rotate this, though, uh, in the case of a right triangle, A could also be the base and, uh, and B could be the height uh, or vice versa. So since the area is obviously the same either way, uh, that formula ends up working out. And again, you could go a similar uh, process and try and work out the other ones. All right, so let's look at how you can solve a question involving metric relations. Uh, we're first going to take a look at the steps. we have to do is identify it as a metric relations question. That's actually pretty easy because we'll have the uh, distinct diagram with the right angle triangle with the height drawn in. After that, we're going to label the diagram using the appropriate letter. So label it uh, as we've already examined. Then you're going to select the appropriate formula. So looking at the information that you want, look at the information that you have, and pick from the four formulas which one is going to help you. And then last, we're going to fill in the given values and solve for our unknown variable. So let's look at a couple examples. All right, so in this example, we're given, uh, we're given a triangle, we're given a couple of different uh, side lengths, and uh, we're going to try and determine the measure. Now, we've already gone over the steps, but I'm just going to go through them quickly as we apply them to our example. So the first thing we need to do is identify it as a metric relations question. And again, this part's pretty easy. We can see we have a big right angle triangle, and we can see we have the height drawn in. Sometimes that diagram can be uh, reflected or rotated, and it can be a little bit trickier to identify, but usually that's a pretty easy piece. Uh, second thing we're going to do is label the diagram using the appropriate letters. So we're going to make sure we kind of match it up um, like we've already looked. And this is probably the trickiest part of metric relations, in my opinion. So what have we got? Well, we said the smaller sides of the triangle were A and B. As it turns out, it doesn't matter whether we call this side A uh, and this side B. I'm going I'm to do that. Or you could reverse them. Sometimes people uh, kind of go left, right. I'll put A on the left and B on the right and that's fine. Other times people say, well, I'm going to make A maybe the small one and B the long one. And, uh, and that doesn't make a difference as long as when we do M and N that we match them up. So I'm going to do M and N right now. So this here would be M and the smaller part here, the 8, would be, uh, would be N. And again, what you'll notice is that A and M are on the same side and B and N are on the same side. And since those are the ones that are using the formulas, as long as you're consistent with that, it doesn't matter. Uh, now, the side at the bottom here, the hypotenuse of the big triangle is C, so put that in. And then we have H here, which is, uh, which is 18. So we've successfully labeled it. If you've got a diagram that's rotated, sometimes it's easiest just to rotate your page and put it on the same kind of orientation, and then you'll find it easier to label. So our next step, pardon me, is we're going to uh, pick the appropriate formula, and we're going to take into account the information we have and the information you want. And it's also possible that one, more than one formula might work. So I wrote a formula up here. So let's take a look at what information do we have. Well, I can see here I've got H, the height, and I've got N down here. And what information do we want? Well, we're asked to find BD, and that would be M. So the question is, okay, well, which of my formulas are going to use H and N and M? So we can go over here. Here it is, h squared equals m times n. And again, it's possible if you have more information that, um, that uh, I want more than one of the formulas you, you could use. Uh, it's also possible there are some situations where um, you may not have the information to use any of them. And if that's the case, look at doing a Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And uh, usually if you do that, you can find enough information to then apply one of these uh, formulas. And again, remember, because all of these are right angle triangles, you can always use Pythagorean theorem with them. All right, so we've selected our appropriate formula. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to write that down here. h squared equals m times n. And then our last step is simply we're just going to go. We're going to fill in the values that we have, and then we're going to solve for the value that we want. So again, just kind of our basic math. So h is 18. So it's 18 squared 
equals m, which we don't know. So we'll leave that as m times 18 uh, times 8. Pardon me. And we'll uh, bring up our calculator. This side over here. So 18 squared. That's 324. So 324 equals. I'm going to write 8m rather than m times 8. And then we just want to find an m, so we have to get rid of multiplying by 8. We do that by dividing by 8. I'll bring my m over here. m equals, so then we have 324, and we're just going to divide that by 8, and it gives us 40.5. So m equals 40.5 centimeters. And there we go. All right, let's take a look at another example. So this example is uh, similar. Again, we can see that uh, the diagram's rotated around a little bit, and we're asked to measure, uh, find the measure of BD. So before I go through the answer, I want you to stop. I want you to try this example on your own and, uh, and see what you can do, and then we'll take a look at the answer. Now, seriously, do it. Do it now. Do it. Write down and, uh, and do it on your own. Okay. I hope you're done now. You better be done. You better be done. But I'm going to go over the answer. All right, so here we go. Let's uh, take a look at our steps. Again, first step, we have to identify it as a metric relations question. And again, even though it's spun around, we can still see triangle ABC, the big one, is a right angle triangle. And we've got the height drawn in right here, another right angle, so it all fits. We're going to label our diagram. And this part's a little bit tricky for this one because, uh, because uh, of the orientation. But again, if you're split around, I'm going to make this would be A down here. This side here would be B, the height right in here, M, the shorter side, and the longer. And again, as long as A and M are matched up and B and N are matched up, we're good. Uh, what you'll notice, actually, the easy way of remembering it is it's an alphabetical order. A and M come before B and N, respectively. So that works. And that the 41 here is going to be side C. So we got them all. Next piece, pick our appropriate formula. And again, we go through, well, what information do we have? In this case, we have C and we have A. What do we ask for? We're asked for BD. Well, that's M. And so now we can look at, all right, which of our formulas uses A, M, and C? And this is it up here. It's the only one that uses all three of those. And so we'll write out A squared equals M times C. And then our last step is to fill in the values that we have and simply solve for our unknown. So A we given is 9, so that's 9 squared. M, we don't know, and times 41. Of course, sometimes maybe we'd have to find out the value over uh, over on this side, and we'd have to take the square root at the end, but it's no big deal. 9 squared is 81, and that equals 41M. Divide by 41. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other side. And again, we'll bring up our, we'll bring up our calculator for this. And in this case, we'll clear it off. We've got 81 divided by 41 equals 1.9, 1.98. I, I like going to two decimals, um, depending on the question, if they didn't indicate how far to go. So you could have put 1.99 or maybe two points around. You put 1.98 and centimeters as well. So there you go. A couple examples. I uh, hope, it, hope it helps. Remember to follow the steps, pick your formula, and you shouldn't have too much difficulty. Thanks for watching. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.